Ryan Shelton is a young man on a mission. Since choosing professional sports as his calling six years ago, the Kentucky native has sold tickets for the Florida Marlins of Major League Baseball and then worked for several minor league hockey teams. Last spring, he was hired by the Salem Red Sox and their parent organization, Fenway Sports Group, as vice president of ticketing for Boston's Advance A minor league affiliate. Less than half a year later, he was named general manager in Salem, pledging to do a better job of responding to local fans. And he got to help hoist the Mills Cup trophy when Salem won the Carolina League title in September. Ryan Shelton, welcome to the interview. Oh, thank you for having me, Gene. I know we've talked before, you believe in goal setting. And I, do. Uh, I know that becoming a minor league general manager was part of a five year plan, thanks in part to a book you got at Starbucks. But to <laughs> talk about your, your concept of goal setting. You're 36 and you set a goal you wanted to be a GM five years ago of a minor league team, and here you are. Uh, that's right. It was. Uh, uh, at the time that I uh, picked up the book at Starbucks you were uh, referring to, it was uh, five, where will you be five years from today? Uh, it was sitting on uh, just a gift shelf at a, a Starbucks. Uh, I was waiting in line. It was the Monday before Thanksgiving in 2008. And uh, I was working for a, a ECHL hockey team, which uh, many in the area here are familiar with, uh, sure. with ECHL, with the Express being here before. Right. And uh, the team was on hard times. I had been there for about 90 days. Uh, I had just left the Florida Marlins. Uh, to go to Augusta to work for this team. Mm -hmm. And uh, the team was about to go out of business. And uh, as uh, I was waiting in line, we were, uh, the whole staff was about to go home for Thanksgiving, not knowing if there would be a team when we got back in town. And uh, over that break, over the Thanksgiving break, I was able to flip through this book. It was uh, really, uh, it wasn't intended to have substance. It was uh, 80 pages with a lot of graphs, quotes, and uh, just a lot of filler. Uh, but for me, it was very impactful. It talked about the importance of envisioning where you want your life to be and uh, setting specific actionable steps. Uh, I don't want to talk about being better. I don't want to talk about uh, advancing my career. I want to talk about the specific steps that mm -hmm. I want to make. And something clicked yeah. and, and here you are. Absolutely. By the way, did the team make it through the Thanksgiving break? Did they make it to the end of the season? Uh, December 3rd uh, was when, when they folded. So we, we did get back and uh, okay. the team did fold. Uh, the Augusta Lynx. That's right. Right. That's right. Um, I know that you told me, Ryan, that I guess you were flown up to Boston for the final interview for this GM position. Yes. And that uh, you told the, the Red Sox people that it was no accident that you were up there and that you were finalists, that you really felt That's, that this is something that was part of your plan, to be at the point where you would be that desirable as a candidate. Uh, that's right. I, I wanted to firmly express that uh, because of this plan I put in place five years ago, uh, that I wasn't here by coincidence. I wasn't here by accident. Uh, it wasn't particularly a position that I was pursuing at that moment. Uh, but it was a position that I had been working toward. Uh, mm -hmm. So it just, it, it made sense for me to be in the room. You know, attendance in Salem at the ballpark's been down the last few years. Uh, you know, in the past, the Avalanche and Red Sox have set records. Can you put your finger on any one reason why attendance has been down at baseball games in Salem the last few years? I, I, I think uh, there may have been a point where we uh, uh, took for granted uh, because this is such a great community that supports so, uh, so strongly the team and we've had uh, baseball consistently for 58 years. Uh, we may have uh, taken our eye off of what it takes to help build crowds and help drive crowds and help uh, entertain those crowds while they're in our building. Uh, so I think we just took our eye off the ball and mm -hmm. uh, opened the gates and uh, hoped that people continued coming to games. Mm -hmm. That led to uh, a consistent uh, decline over uh, over a four-year period. And uh, we were up slightly this year. I, I, I have noticed uh, uh, a lot of the commentary I've read recently does refer to attendance being down again. Uh -huh. uh, while it's not where we wanted it to be by right. any means, uh, we did start to lay a foundation this, this year. Uh -huh. And even fighting through some of the weather that we had, we started controlling the things that we knew we could control, right. and we did still see a, a slight attendance increase. Mm -hmm. Now the Red Sox, of course, came back and won the Carolina League pennant. Yes, and, you know, yes. after you've been on the job about a month. But how much <laughs> does a at, at 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 a ball? How much does a winning team make a difference, or is it really the experience? You know, getting the casual fan to come back and say, "Hey, I like this. I want to come back." Yeah. Uh, winning doesn't hurt. Uh, it, it definitely doesn't hurt. It, it was exciting there at the end. It was uh, even the way we were able to finish. And uh, I will say that uh, for the first time in my career, I felt like uh, the front office and the fans uh, actually contributed to the win. Uh, I uh, told the story recently to our uh, part-time staff at a picnic that we had that talking with the players after the game, uh, there's generally niceties that are exchanged, a lot of uh, thank yous for your hard work during the year. 
and uh, I've experienced that for six years now. Mm -hmm. uh, the players told me specifically that after having been in Potomac and seeing 800 fans uh, on Sunday night at a game where there were dollar tickets and dollar hot dogs and only had 800 people. Potomac's who they played for the championship. That, that's right, right, Potomac for the championship. When we came back here for game three and they saw 4,000 fans, 4,000 very loud fans banging the thunder sticks, mm -hmm. they, uh, many players expressed to me that there was no chance we were going to lose that game. Yeah, I know I talked to catcher Blake Swihart afterwards yes. and Mookie Betts, the second baseman, and that's one of the first things they remarked about. And that crowd was really wired into the game. They were hanging on every pitch. And a lot of times you don't really see that. So as a baseball fan, I'm sure that's something you'd like to see, bigger Absolutely. crowds and more people kind of wired in. That's right. And there's uh, the things we're doing during the game do connect to the energy in the building. Uh, Billy talked to me. It was on Star Wars night when uh, I was down on the field about to take uh, uh, Darth Vader out for the first <laughs> pitch. And uh, Billy pulled me aside. Billy McMillan, the manager. That's right. right. Uh, asked me about... Uh, why we were doing so many new things and that he had, he had observed it and felt like it was it kept the fans almost primed for what they were going to do on the field mm -hmm. so when we got to the end of a close game and the crowd was very rowdy we know that at times baseball crowds can be be somewhat silent at times right. uh, that the crowd was very loud it was because throughout a game we were keeping people engaged constantly. We had the, the screaming chicken running through the stands. We had uh, our uh, game night staff really keeping fans amped up mm -hmm. so that when we have Price on the mound uh, with a chance to close out the game, uh, the fans are all still primed and ready for mm -hmm. that. Well, that's pretty good that Billy and McMillan noticed, because notice, yes. whenever you talk to Billy, it's all about player development, and that's the focus, of course, in, in A-ball. But th for him to notice that, um, that yes. that's pretty good. And I know uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Ryan, as we tape here, you sent an open letter to fans, um, you know, promising to be the team would be better listeners, elevate the cus level of customer service. Why did you feel it was important? And you also put a an email address in there for feedback. Yes. Why did you think it was important to send that letter out? Uh, we really wanted fans to understand that uh, we do care what they have to say. There's a lot of things that we can observe and, and know within the office that, that we need to improve, uh, but there's things that we're not gonna think about. There's things that we're, we're too close to the situation. Uh, we're, uh, we don't get to come to our own games as fans. Uh, we're uh, very close to the operation. Uh, so feedback at SalemSox.com was put in place so fans could tell us exactly what uh, what they'd like to see different. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be able to to uh, take care of everyone's need. We can't please everyone all the time, uh, but we are responding to those. Uh, one thing we are very proud of is uh, since we put that account out, we've received almost 100 emails now, and we've responded to everyone within 24 hours, hmm. uh, either myself, Tim Anderson, or Alan Lawrence. Uh, we've been very, uh, very attentive to the fans. Some good ideas? There? Uh, there's been some great feedback, uh, I'll say. Uh, one that uh, it uh, can't commit yet, we're going to be able to do it, does look like we will be able to. Mm -hmm. uh, a fan uh, wrote to us right after the championship how great it would be to have uh, the team set in the team store. Uh, we have the baseball card set that we do every year, right. but half those players are gone. It still has uh, uh, Cicchini on the team, it right. still has Henry Owens. Uh, these sets don't include Mookie Betts. He was in Greenville at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this fan recommended, you know, it would be great if you would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like we're going to do that now, and I, I've told the fan that if we do, I'm going to send him the first set for free. Uh, it's something we're so close to the situation, uh -huh. it never would have occurred to us right. to do that. It's right. great feedback. Sometimes it's great to have an eyes, set of eyes from outside the inner organization to see, yes. to give you some feedback. You know, one thing I know you wanted to do is um, you also want to kind of remind people that come to games that some of these guys they see are going to be in the major leagues maybe as early as the next year. Absolutely. Jackie Bradley Jr., yes. 2012, was here. He's been in the majors this year. Uh, Will Middle, Middlebrooks a couple years ago. I think you said five guys from the 2012 team have already had... Uh, That's right. Five, not just the from the 2012 year. team, five guys from the starting lineup on opening night. Uh, so it was five of those nine from guys. From A ball all the way to the majors That's, within a season. That's correct. Uh, and we want to educate fans more to that and understand one one bit of feedback we do here that uh, we don't have direct control over, uh, it is uh, something that Boston controls, is the player movement. And we do get that, uh, get that feedback right. that uh, fans would like to see players here uh, for years. Uh, unfortunately, if a player is here for years, uh, his development Being probably good, isn't, right. isn't going. Right. Huh. Uh, at the same time, we want winning teams. Uh, we also want to be able to see players longer. So. Uh, we want to show fans 
essentially transfer that sense of pride mm -hmm. rather than having the pride for the player being here for a long period of time. We want them to be proud they're going to see him on Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. Mm -hmm. Your experience in, in minor league hockey, which included time in New Hampshire with Manchester, which was yes. a Kings farm team, you got to meet uh, Jonathan Quick, the That's Kings, right. LA Kings goaltender, and Luke Robitaille when they came through with the Sandy Cup. Your experience in minor league hockey, Ryan, did it really teach you about attracting casual fans, you know, with promotions or in game? Uh, Hi, Jinx. Uh, it did. Uh, one thing that uh, when I started in hockey, I was, uh, of course, in Augusta for a short time and then went on to uh, the South Carolina Stingrays, also in the ECHL. Being in two non traditional hockey markets and being in, uh, in the South uh, selling mm -hmm. hockey, uh, you weren't selling the on ice product as much. You were selling the overall experience of coming to a game. Uh, being a late in life hockey fan myself, uh, I was always able to convey to fans that. Uh, the great thing with hockey is you don't have to know what's going on. You don't have to know all the rules. Uh, it's fast paced, a lot of action. If something good happens, a loud horn's going to go off and everybody's going to sing a song. Uh, we, we're going to transfer those types of concepts here. Mm -hmm. uh, not everyone is coming out ready to keep a scorebook. Uh, though we do want to have a game next year where we teach fans how to keep score. How to keep score, right? Uh, that's a tradition that's handed down from fathers to sons for generation to generation. We're going to have a baseball 101 night next year where we it's teach a great fans idea, how to do that. It's sort of a dying art at this point, I think. It is. Yeah. Uh, but we know that every fan's not going to be into that. There, there is going to be the casual fan uh, that uh, just wants to come out for a nice night at the ballpark. It's, mm -hmm. it's incredibly inexpensive. And uh, if you come out on one of the Thursday nights where we have specials, there's uh, it's a great way to enjoy a night mm -hmm. at the park. Cheap beverages. Just a couple minutes left, a couple of quick yes. uh, impressions. Uh, how did it feel to be on the field with the players and manager Billy McMillan hoisting that Mills Cup trophy uh, You know, less than four weeks into your tenure? How did it be a good feeling? Uh, it, it was amazing. Uh, it, it felt great. It, it was very storybook. Uh, I've I did comment a number of times uh, after that night that it felt as though there was a sense of inevitability uh, to it. The team was so hot, they played so well, they worked so hard, they went through so many call-ups, mm -hmm. and to be able to be there at that point, it just uh, it felt right. And when they last 11 games, I think, regular season right. and playoffs just kind of roll through. Um, and uh, working on your next five-year plan? That's right, yes. Okay. And just to wrap up, um, what would you like to tell Salem Red Sox fans Ryan and maybe those who have never been to a game or, or come in frequently. What would you like to tell them about coming back to the ballpark? Uh, I think things they're going to see next year, and we want to encourage fans to come early uh, to be able to see what we're uh, what we're trying to accomplish. You're going to see uh, a higher level of customer service. Uh, we're going to be very attentive. Uh, we're not just going to respond to complaints. We're going to anticipate needs, and uh, they're going to see a much higher level of customer service. Uh, and the in-game experience overall is going to be uh, uh, better than probably what they've experienced in recent years, where uh, our game night staff has been challenged uh, to come up with new ways to engage and entertain mm -hmm. fans uh, at all times. All right, sounds good. We're going to have to leave it there. Ryan Shelton, the GM of the okay. Salem Red Sox. Thank you, Gene. Thanks for coming on. This is the interview. I'm Gene Morano. We'll be right back.